which is a good thing to do, uh, pardon me, when you're um, sitting a lot and also for creating some stimulation because um, the stimulation from the base of the spine will carry you through your whole body, your whole nervous system. And it's a wonderful stimulation as opposed to an anxious stimulation. So I'm gonna teach you how to use Cobra to do that. So we'll start off on your backs and you can start with your bum right at the top of the bolster and come on right down. So we've got the butt cheeks or the tailbone right at the top of the bolster and the shoulder blades come under. And then you release the weight of your body back completely. Now just to review, when we go into restorative, it's really more about breathing and softening down into the ground with the stillness of the pose. So we're really working that surrender ability. I was just reading about an indigenous term, pua, pua, which is what happens when you emerge? Um, it's a, there's no real English translation for it. And it's, it's like an arising. It's, um, it's described by this uh, ethnobotanist she's described as by, it's like when a mushroom comes up overnight. It's just, it wasn't there yesterday night and, and you wake up in the morning and it's there. That fresh, emergence that comes from light coming right through the form of you or the ground or the mushroom. And that's really what you're doing in all of your movements in restorative, is that they're coming from an inner movement that arises. And the parts of the body that do not arise soften and fall back. So that the parts that do arise, in this case, it's just a gentle um, length arising of your tailbone, it's happening from that inner stillness that can push a mushroom to the ground, that can cause the in-breath to draw in. There's nothing you're doing except softening and tenderizing. So that is the attitude we practice today as you come into restorative. So do feel the length of your neck, feeling the head rest back. And then gently let your head roll from side to side. Feeling the weight of the shoulders on the floor and the weight of the tailbone on the bolster. And then you can relax. Keep on letting your weight rest back into the bolster. Now in particular, feel the tailbone heavy. As you feel like that tailbone is a plumb line drawing you right down into the bolster. Great. Now you can hug that right knee in and Keep your left foot on the floor and pull that knee in. And to begin, just bend the elbows and only pull in enough that you go with a mini ambition. Just wherever your, land, your knee lands. Take in a deep breath. Exhale in. And then pull in a little further. So you will feel the, the, the thigh squeeze. And then a little further and keep the elbows bending to pull in. Now you can do a gentle rock side to side with the knee. And again, the elbows are bending. Now as you draw to your center, pull in a bit more so you're more towards the mid midline, just as close to the belly button as you can get and keeping the elbows bending, come into a deep breath. You may notice that as you bend the elbows, you can draw your shoulders back into the floor more. That's a great stretch. Now you can take an in-breath and then extend that left leg out. Point the left leg as you keep the right leg pulling in. 
actively point, breath. Good, two more breaths. Now, if you can take in, as I'm uh, demonstrating with the sound, if you can take in a really deep breath, that's wonderful. And then gently release that right leg, bend both knees, and just have the feet once again flat on the floor. Let all your movements be very gentle. And once again, let go. Press the shoulder blades together and under, and then soften them to let the chest fall and stay with your breathing. Now on your next in-breath, hug your left leg in, and you can hug either in front or behind. Hold that left knee in really snug. Not too much, we're just beginning again, so be gentle. And a little bit more, bending the elbows. Now as you're ready, extend that right leg out, reaching out through the right foot, and see if you can actively press that right foot out so you lengthen right through the quad. The bend of the elbows drawing the leg in so the shoulders are back, and you stay with your breathing. Keeping the Elbows bending to squeeze in. Now pull in a little bit more towards the midline of your body so your knee will come towards your ribs as you keep that right leg reaching out. You've got a beautiful windy day out there. And on the, uh, the Norway spruce, the buds are just coming out. And um, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but if you want, there's thousands of buds and they're edible. <laughs> and they're filled with vitamin C. And um, I put them in the dehydrator and I cover them with uh, um, apple cider vinegar and then I, um, I, I sprinkle them with ground cashew, so it's kind of like Parmesan cheese, um, except vegan. And then I put them in the dehydrator and I serve them last spring. Oh, they're really good. They're just like little crunchy, uh, thin croutons. Um, and the taste is a bit lemony at the beginning. Um, so if you have time on your hands, um, if you're retired, <laughs> no, I'm not talking to anybody specifically, sure. If, if, if anybody would love to come by, just bring, um, I can leave a ladder out there. I've got a short step ladder and you could just take as many as you can slip off. You'll see, it's just a beautiful little bud at the end. Now, um, good. Now just do a little side to side with the knee. Now those buds go out about go oh, about this long, um, some of them this long. So they are packed with um, energy. And um, I really love the taste. I've even given them to children and they like them. So if you want a lemony um, filled with vitamin C, natural um, enhancement, then, then come by and pick some of these buds. I, um, I tried to pick as many as I could last, last, last spring, but the spring got warm really quick and they started to burst open and then they were just needly, you know, I could I could eat it say like eating a little bunch of needles. So if you can get by it's a, it's an incredible surprise and then you can tell your friends you're eating trees on your side. <laughs> on the side they can say you're totally crazy. <laughs> and then let that left leg down. Now you're going to straighten both legs and let your palms just roll up to the ceiling. And your shoulder blades are under. And do just feel that length right through the low abdomen listening to your low back. If it is a bit too pinchy, too tight through the low back, bend the knees and have your feet apart. And then completely let go into your breathing. And now the wind has softened. And do feel the beautiful coaxing of the breath rise in the belly as you inhale and sinking as you exhale. It's 
sustain with your breath. Take one more minute of breathing. And catch if you can notice if the mind is going into thoughts and see if you can come right back to the rise of the belly on the inhale and the sink of the belly on the exhale. Next, we take the right knee up, hug that right knee in at the front if you can or behind if you need to. And then take that knee in and out. Keep the left foot pressing on the floor to open up through that left quad. And the arm out to the side, a little bit down, so you're like half a V as you let that arm rest back. Pulling the knee in nice and snug. Now press the left foot down into the floor strongly and pull that right knee to the outside. Let that right knee stay bent and let your upper body go completely. Keep that left foot pressing down. And if you wish to increase the stretch, it really depends on how your thigh is. There's the option to pull the heel in closer and press down. That will get technically deeper in the top thigh. It just depends where your tension is. Um, or you can take the foot out more and press down. That will go down lower in your quad for the stretch. But do actively press into the floor to get that, to get that wonderful uh, opening through the quad. And I'm just going to show you on this side. Um, this right knee is coming to the outside. So you do get that stretch right through the inner thigh as I change back. So keep that knee rotating out to the right. Keep that left foot pressing down. Actively draw the breath down into the low abdomen with a nice beginning breath. Now make circles with that right knee and keep the left foot in the floor pressing down. Let the bend of the elbow draw that leg around. And you're breathing in and out. Good, and then just pull the knee to the outside as much as you can to the right. Keep that left foot gently pressing down. Now, of course, if this is a really strong stretch, like in through that left quad, feel free to back off a bit if you need to let go more. So just notice if you want to go for it or if you really want to stay in a more relaxed, open release into the pose. Just notice what feels better. Take in three deep breaths. And then you can gently draw the right knee back in. Take the left arm around the knee, pull the knee in snug. Now lift your head, lift your chin, and tuck your chin in. You're really just lifting the head if you could. And then you squeeze the rib cage by pressing the thigh into the ribs, and you're getting a strong stretch right through the upper back by tucking the chin. Also, you're increasing that stretch right in the quad and taking a deep breath. Now you can gently release that right leg. Now I'm trusting you got a pretty good stretch in through that left quad. 
Now just let the legs bend, rest the arms for a moment, and let your body go again. And tune into the difference between the left and the right quad, if you can really feel how much that left quad is opened up. Take a deep breath in down to the bottom of the belly. Good, and if you want to check and just make sure that your mic is turned off and then that allows you to just let go completely. Take in two more deep breaths. Good. I find that on the exhale, your belly drops more because the spine will let go more, and then you'll get that longer uh, bridge, longer spine. Here we go. On your next in-breath, take that left knee in. Hug with the left arm and pull that left knee to the outside. Take the right arm up on a V and just take that right knee out to just that right leg. Um, sorry, the right arm back. Keep the right foot pressing down into the floor as you stay with your breath. Good. Really pull that left knee to the outside. Press that right foot down gently to stretch through the right quad. Staying with your breath. Good, the shoulder blade is under. Keep that left knee really reaching to the outside. Everything is active. Knee presses out, left knee, right foot presses down, and the back of the right arm presses down, getting that nice long rib cage on the right side. Good. Now, I'm not going to try to suggest what your body is feeling, <laughs> but I will say that I can feel a massive heat on the right waist and right in through the right thigh. So the breath that I'm doing, the Ujjayi breath, is a deep in breath through the nose, a tightening in through the rib cage, a tightening to in through the esophagus, so that when you push the breath out, there's more heat contained in your torso. And that is like keeping the abdominal wall pulled up, even when you inhale, and then really pulling the abdominal wall down when you exhale. And that tightening in through the trachea to get that tightening in through the throat. So I'm going to attempt to do a really loud Ujjayi breath as I guess it's done. So the exhale is very much like a shh breath, but with the mouth closed and that pressure pressing down, and that helps to get more heat in your torso. Now the fascinating thing about breathing this way is you'll notice where there's tension in the body because the areas that heat up is where there is uh, muscular tension, what we can call congestion in that area. It could be in the organs, the tissue, muscle, or um, in any of the connected tissue. Good. Now just gently hug that right knee in and hugging around the front, take an in-breath and then exhale and tuck your chin. Hold that left knee in strongly as you bend the knees to the side, staying with your breathing. And then you can gently release the upper body down, coming down, and then release that left leg to the floor, coming into the best position for you if it's to have the knees bent. Or if you wish to stretch in through the lower abdomen, then you can let your legs straighten. Just feel for the best position. Stay with your breath. Take one more minute.
catch a few more deep breaths. Nice deep breath. Feel the belly rise on the inhale. And sink on your exhale. Okay, we're going to return to the bent knee position. And then we'll take the right knee out, pull that right knee in. And then pull the left knee in, pull them both in wide. Come into happy baby, grabbing onto the low legs or potentially the feet. And let the elbows bend to the outside. Now notice a gent, or just do a gentle rock side to side. And then you're going to grab your feet. Now you're going to pull the toes down. So I like if you really need to bend the knees to do so. Um, and if it's a bit too much, you can always do one leg at a time and just let the other leg come out. But if you can grab onto the toes, pull the toes down, stretch through the feet. And in particular, really pull the baby toes back. This will get right in through the arches and the fascia of the feet. And it feels really good when you're done. <laughs> and really pull back. You're very safe here. I'm a big believer in stretching the toes and helping with the fascia of the feet. With all of the um, plantar fasciitis we can get or arthritis through the feet, I, I really don't think we ever, ever, ever stretch the feet. And we think of the weight bearing we do all day. So I love to stretch the fascia. Now, then see if you can bring your feet more towards the head side and your tailbone is still strongly supported and your knees are bending to the outside. Now, if you can bend the elbows back, so now I'm able to let them fall back wherever you are, but do let them come back. So, wow, that's a really good stretch for the sacrum. Now, keep the heels reaching out as you pull the toes back and you stay with the constant breath. To assist the stretch on your exhale, really pull the tailbone down. So it's like you're pressing the belly button back, just like a Pillsbury dough poke getting that area of pressing back, and you stay with your breathing. Now with the head, just the gaze is to the ceiling, if you of course need to look to see the pose, but eventually do have the head straight. And in yoga we call it a drishti. Drishti is a focal point where it's just past the tip of your nose, so the eyes don't look up at all, they look just straight down and out. And that position with the eyes, or you can with the eyes closed, of course. Now we're taking two more breaths with the exhale, really pulling the abdominal wall in. And once more. Really good. Now you can let your heels fall and just release the weight of the legs and let yourself go. There's going to be a big influx of blood right down into the lower back and your hips again. So let that, you might even feel the gush of, of blood coming down. So a couple of physiological aspects of what we just did. Whenever you have your hips higher than your throat, you're increasing the relaxation response. You're also helping blood pressure. You're also helping drainage of lymphatic drainage in through the thighs because you're squeezing in, in through the thighs. About 75% about of your lymph nodes are of your lower body are right in where your hands would be in your pockets. So that's a really great way to squeeze through that area and then when you come down, you get more blood flow right down into the lymph nodes in here. Now then we take the right leg up and you're going to grab the right foot with your hand, opposite left hand, or your, your leg. So you're either going to get the foot to do a half pull across, and I'll just show you on this side. So you're pulling that ankle across. This is brilliant for doing like a lazy pigeon <laughs> so that you can kind of let go more, not to mention any names, Marion or anybody who has really, really tight hips. This is a brilliant pose to stretch through that, that right hip. Now you are tipping as a unit over to your left and you pull that right ankle down and as high as you can towards the shoulder. So you could come up like this but truly, I find it's, it's a better stretch of the outside hinge if you bring the foot just even with just below your shoulder for most people. If you're down here, that's great too. You'll still really get that outside hip. 
Now either stay in a strong pull and you're still really soft. You're soft in the upper body. There's not much work for your hand. And if, you, if it feels right, I'm almost touching the floor and I'm just doing a little bounce up and down and that will get a deeper release as you come down in through that outside hand. I've never done this before. <laughs> and it feels fantastic. Keep really getting that outside hip. So if you can let your, I've got the right arm back, it's falling back and you're opening through that right side of your chest. Now turn as you're doing your bounce. Turn to your right, gaze to your right, and just keep that bounce going on, staying with your breath. Steady breath. And then on your next in breath, just draw that leg back very gently. Hold behind the knee, just with the foot in the air, no action. Just pull that right knee in. Press the left foot down into the floor. Let your elbows bend. Now come on into toe circles with the foot. Coming right around. Now as you're doing this, see if you can spread your toes. You might need to stop to get the focus. Now see if you can send your big toe to the point to the ceiling and pull your other toes back. So it's kind of like, if you remember Mork and Mindy, it's kind of like nettle nettle, <laughs> where we take his hands apart like this, and, and you're doing this with your foot. Um, now if this just doesn't work, pull your toes back and point your big toe to the ceiling so you can get, wow, so you can get more of an activation. You might even need to take your index finger and point that big toe away, pull your toes back. Stretch in through the flashing of that big toe. Really, really point. Really stretch. Really point. Bending that big toe down. And then just release. Shake out nice and floppy through the foot. And then release that right leg down. Wonderful. The shoulders are resting back. Feel that increased blood flow in that right foot. Next, you can take your left foot up. Come on into half a happy baby. You're pulling that knee to the outside. And the right foot is pressing down to get a great stretch in through that right quad. The right arm is resting to the side as you press that left knee to the outside. Pulling down as much as you can. And again, the whole upper body relaxes. It's really just the bend of the elbow that pulls the foot in. Great. And then you can take your hands over, pull the toes back, and press your knee down. This right thigh, if you can press the foot down to increase the stretch in through the psoas muscle. And nice deep breath down into the lower abdomen. Staying with your breathing. Keep that right shoulder pressing back as you do. Okay, really, really good. And then you can take that right hand, grab onto the left foot, take the left arm out to the side, pull across. So you're literally like a, a door hinging across a bent door and pull that ankle up over, all the way over, keeping that left arm resting to the side and you can turn to your left slowly with the head and see how far you can tip over to that right side. Now I know Marianne, this will be a bit tricky when you're on the pillows. So if you need to tip to the, to all the way to the right to anchor yourself and just do that, that'll just help to open up that left hip. And then you can, you can let go a little bit more there. Now you'll notice on your exhale, you really pull the low left abdominal wall in and that will help to draw your left hip back as you stay with your breathing. 
And then notice if you want to do little pulses or just stay in the pull across. Stay with a nice full breath. Beautiful. That, that left shoulder is back as you stay with your breathing. Nice, lovely breaths. Good. And then just notice if you want to pull a little bit higher, so I'm pulling my foot up towards my shoulder, or stay in the same cross, straight cross position. Just notice what is the greatest stretch from the outside here. And then on your next in-breath, you can draw the legs up. Good. And now you're going to take your left hand just to pull the toes back and point your big toe up to the ceiling. Now, if the toe is not pointing up, just take your index finger and your opposite hand. Bend that toe in, so I'm really bending and you're pulling the toes back. Get a great stretch of the fascia of the feet. Good, that heel is reaching up. Keep pulling the toes back as you breathe. Nice steady breath. Breath. And then you let go. Okay, come on, right into ankle circles. Arms are resting. Good, other direction. Now see if you can spread the toes. Go as wide as you can. Really reaching out, spread them. You might have to really concentrate, even if you get a little bit of space. Good, and then just shake out that leg, really floppy. Deep breaths. And then release that left leg to the floor. Have the knees bent. Feel the tailbone heavy on the bolster. You can press your shoulder blades under. Take the arms to the outside. Now we'll bend both knees up again so you can bend both knees in wide. Hug on to the fronts of the shins if you can. And once again, come right into your happy baby. So you're bending the knees to the outside and do a slow, gentle rock side to side. Now, if you travel, <laughs> then now you might want to just do this. Pull your pants up or pull your bolster up, either one. <laughs> and then just take the shoulder blades under <laughs> and let your knees just bend to the outside. Now, to come deeper into the core, we're going to take the left ankle on top, right ankle under. Now, holding onto the feet, bend the ankles across. Let the elbows bend to the outside. Stay with your breathing. And as you do, do a few giggles. So do a <laughs> So you just do your spontaneous laughter. <laughs> and that will bring you down into your core a little bit more. And once again, a giggle. <laughs> So you pull the ankle across. I know you'll feel silly. <laughs> and the elbows bend to the outside. Good, another one. <laughs> so you just pull across. Now just see if you can pull a little bit more. Okay, um, I'm super hugging the elbows out, uh, bending them out rather. And so the hug is pulling down. And, um, and that is pulling in through the sacrum more. Wherever you can grab one is good. Now, just tip a little to your left. Do a half a giggle there, do a little. <laughs> good, so you get the core to come in. <laughs> and then come on over to your right, a little giggle. <laughs> or a big one. <laughs> and I hope you got your low back more. And then you come back to the middle. Now, the legs come to the ceiling and you lengthen. Now, hold on anywhere or not. You might want to just do a final action that you're reaching the heels up. Pull the toes back as you reach out through the heels. Take your time to lengthen through the backs of the legs. So we're moving into a bit of ambition out of restorative, and we're really lengthening through the backs of the legs. Now, if you can, bring your heels out so the shoulders are resting back as you pull back from the toes. 
and you keep your, uh, your upper body relaxed. Now the core, you pull down as you reach the heels out and you stay with a steady breath. And as you reach the heels out, you really lengthen the backs of the legs. And then stay right there with your breathing. Now you can bring the legs back up. Now, if you can um, just have the heels straight up and then bring the right foot in front of the left and you've got toe to heel. And then reach the heels out once again and you're gonna lead out. Keep the legs as straight as you can. You'll get a fantastic squeeze to the front of the right thigh. So this back foot is pushing the right foot down. And you keep your upper body relaxed with the legs straight. Now, to see if you can really relax through the shoulders. So the upper body is, is uninvolved <laughs> and you're really attempting to do that. You want to really free your shoulders up. If it's way so much, if it's so much through your right uh, hamstring, you just bend the knees like this. You know, that's perfectly fine. In fact, you can even just straighten your left leg and keep your right leg bent. So just negotiate there. See what, see what your body needs to do. And if you can, if you can keep that left leg straight. Now, a couple more breaths. Breathe that left back heel out. And again, the upper body is letting go as you reach that left heel out. Great. And then you bend your knees and you're hugging both knees in. Do a gentle rock side to side. That was bent. Great. And then you can come back to the middle, extend gently the legs up again, reach through the heels. Good. Now, here we go. The same position, still the feet together. I have the balls of the feet together and the heels are slightly apart. Reach the heels over as much as you can. Keep the shoulders pressing back. The core is strong as you reach out through the heels and as you keep the toes pulling back. Now take your right foot. Now what I find is the little notch in between the big toe and the second toe is perfect for doing like a hooking of your, uh, of your left heel. So reach the right heel out, reach the left heel out, get the legs as straight as you can as you reach the heels out and down. Remember that the head is back so there is a gap underneath the neck. The arms resting to the side and keep the heels reaching out. Really reach out. And again, if you need to bend the front left leg, please do. But if you can keep the legs straight, you will get more stretch in the back of the knee, more of the hamstring. So be strong but merciful. And you keep that right heel reaching out. Reach, 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 reach. Relax the upper body. Breath, breath. And then you can gently release that leg, bend the knees, and let the heels come all the way down. We have the knees bent with the feet flat on the floor. Great. The next thing is to take the bolster down, and you're gonna push it just underneath your knees. Take your feet right to the top, have your feet hip width apart. Do a pelvic tilt that you're pressing your feet into your pillows or bolster and then peel the tailbone out. Now, if you can send your knees away and keep the rise right from the shoulder blades right through to the knees. So the attempt is to have a line straight from the knees all the way down to the back of your shoulders. Press evenly through the foot, the feet, <laughs> and keep your upper body relaxed. The gaze to the ceiling. Now, if you can, this is a biggie, if you can press your left, your right foot down and lift your left knee off the bolster and keep that right foot pressed, coming into activating the back of the right hip, stay with your breath, maybe you can get fancy and do kind of like a synchronized swimming lift. And I don't know if you could, but if you can pull the toes back and reach the heel out. If you're down, excellent, just keep that lift. If you can do the lift and come up, reaching through the heel, Keep pressing down in through that right heel. The upper body relaxed, the left leg straight. Stay with your breathing, and then you can come down. You're lifting, 
come up again in the bridge if you need to come down, please do. Keep the shoulders down. And now press the left foot strongly into the bolster. Lift the right leg up, try not to move the hips down. Keep lengthening. Reach through that right heel, pull the toes back. Get the bum up and then that nice and high as you press into that left foot. Keep reaching that right heel out. Press into the left foot. Upper body, letting go. Breath. Reaching, breath, breath. Excellent, draw that right leg down. Slowly lower, keep the tailbone up until the very last breath as you come down. And then release the entire spine into the floor. Take two minutes to completely let go. As I leave you in silence, just take this moment to feel all of the benefits that we just gave the nerves and the muscles along the spine. another minute of releasing. The low back is heavy. Chest is open. Take in two more deep breaths here. And one more deep breath. Very nice. Now we're going to gently roll to your right side. Draw all the way up to seated position. Come into your kneeling position. And if you wish, you can sit on top of the pillows and just straddle the pillows to get a nice tall spine. Otherwise, stay in the kneeling position and keep space right in between the ribs and the hips. Good. Now, just let the palms relax and feel how the chin is back so that you've got a nice ascending quality coming right from the middle of the head coming up. Come into awareness of the breathing and in a very tender way, feel, you want to feel the breath, but I want you to feel how you can keep the breath inside. In other words, when you inhale, instead of letting anything expand, keep the rib cage pulled up, put back and up. This will help to increase the breath deeper into the ribs into the back sorry so that keeping the abdominal wall in will help to bring the breath right into your back so here we go so this is the in breath instead of getting an expansion you keep the rib cage in this will create more space in the vertebrae in your back 
And as you exhale, you actively pull the abdominal wall back. Inhale, keep the rib cage in. In and up. And exhale and pull the abdominal wall back. Inhale, keep the abdominal wall in. And exhale and pull the abdominal wall back. And again, inhale. And exhale. This is the mechanism that we'll go into for the breath of joy. So for the breath of joy, we take the arms up overhead. We start with the arms out to the side, so the elbows are right back, so they're not in front, so you'll feel yourself really tipped back into your whole spine. We go for 27 pumps, breathing in, and we'll begin. And then let the arms relax for three regular breaths as you sit in your tall spine. Good, stay with your breath. Open. And one more breath. Okay, that's lovely. Now we'll come into two more rounds. So bringing the arms to the outside and begin breathing in. Go ahead, let the arms rest. As I'm sure you've identified now, when um, the beautifulness of the uh, AirPods is that when the loud, the sound is really loud, it dulls the sound. So my breath is very strong. I'm doing a, 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 a squeeze back of the abdominal wall and then just letting the breath naturally fill. So I'm letting the breath, just letting the abdominal wall come out. When I do the exhale, it's a very strong uh, Pillsbury dough pull back and the arms throw. So I'm not doing like a, a, a weight training, but throw and then drop. And I know with the speed of the hands, it might look like it's hard to see. You're doing an exhale and then you just fall. We'll go for one more round, taking the arms out, breathing in. And then let the arms drop, totally relax. Good, feel all the effects of the breath. Feel your chest open. Feel the shoulders back. Letting everything soften. Great. And now you can come with your hands just over the bolster. The knees will come apart and we're going to do child's pose right over the bolster. The Bolster is far enough away that the edge of the forehead comes to the edge as you reach your arms out. And then you do a little rock side to side with your hips. You can just let your hands fall. Breathe into your back, and in particular, when you pull the abdominal wall back, exhale. So just inhaling and exhaling. And take your time here, take another minute to rock out the hips and stay with that position while I just grab a drink. A water will tell us. Great. Now on your next inhale, Come on back up. And then from here, we're gonna come right to standing. So you can take the hands just beside the body. 
Now I'm going to come into uh, a downward dog. So if you'd like to do it that way, otherwise you can just step one knee forward, step the other leg forward, and then come up into standing. Downward dog, we tuck the toes under. It's a short downward dog, and then you lift through your hips, and you can walk your hands back. The knees may be way bent. And then you can slowly uncurl, go stand and just remain in your standing position as we catch up. And then come on all the way up into standing. Now we come into breath of joy this way, which is to take the arms up and overhead and then exhale and fall. From the side, it's quite a, it's quite a big rise in, in you uh, open through the chest, the eyes come up, and you exhale and bend. So it's a big swing and exhale and bend. So we're gonna go for 20 pumps. So here we go, breathing in and exhale. Breathe in, exhale, up, exhale. Six. Thirteen. and then just let the arms drop. Now take a moment to stand. Notice how you feel. Feet are hip width apart, spacing between the ribs and the hips. This is very good for the uh, GI tract doing the speedy fold. In fact, um, I just want to show you in, um, in, in, Kundalini, in Kundalini Yoga, they do it very, very quickly. So they would do like a pull down, lift, pull down, and they're literally crouching back and pressing the GI tract right into the knees. So it's a way that you're increasing the chi right from the bottom of the spine and up. Right away, I can feel the strength that's required in through the legs. So this would be something to do if you can't run, which as you might have noticed, everybody's running by. There's so many people running because we can't get on a treadmill at the gym. But that is a really good way if you couldn't run, is it's not too far to bend your knees, just this much. And you're doing inhale, press, up, 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 up. And that bending action and that pumping will give like a very, very strong sprint. And that is a fantastic way to decrease body fat when you go for, uh, you can go for one minute, 10 seconds, take about a one minute breath, uh, sorry, a one minute break, and then, <laughs> and then you come into another 10 seconds to one minute. All out. That's Tabata training, you may have heard of that. It's where you go all out, you take up to a five minute recovery, and then you go all out again in 10, 30 seconds or a minute. So that would be something to do if you're looking for cardiovascular training. It's also very good for emotion regulation. It's very good for getting rid of emotional angst, such as anxiety, and also to de decrease depression because of the change basically in the blood and also in the brain, the blood-brain barrier. So anything that is rapid, anything that takes your arms up and then down is good for blood pressure, mood regulation, and cardiovascular. So, so many things we can do that we don't have to run around and there's no impact. So that's the cardiovascular portion of the show. And now um, I wanted to, there's one more I wanted to do. Yeah, this is, um, because we're doing so much more sitting these days possibly, um, is to come, I wanted to show you my new favorite um, quad stretch. Um, so take the right knee forward, take the left leg back, and then you lift from your rib cage. Now, you're really tucking the tailbone under, so you're not lunging forward, but you tuck under, and then you lift and you open through the chest. Now, I very, very first saw this, I just remembered this, from a runner, Gail Olenikova. She was an incredible athlete, and Sports Illustrators, Sports, Sports Illustrated said she had the greatest legs to ever stride the earth. They were like oaks, they were just huge and strong, and she used to run barefoot on the beach in California. She was from Scarborough, 
but she got in a, I'm just trying to entertain you. She got into a huge car accident when she was 17 and she moved to California and went on a diet of raw vegan food, did yoga and running in the water, in shallow water to rebuild her knees. And 16 weeks after they told her she would never walk again and that they had to operate and she refused. 16 weeks after that, after all that training, she won the Boston Marathon. <laughs> now that woman became my hero. I think it was 14 and I had her book with me at all times and it showed her running on the beach in a bikini. <laughs> she was a bodybuilder and, um, and a marathoner, which is the most bizarre combination you can have. So she had strength and endurance. She was just incredible. So sorry. Um, so you've got that knee pressing down. If it's way too much on the knee, then you would have a toe uh, pressing down. But here we are we're continuing that opening. And that's not just because Miriam's here, although it, there's definitely a little bit of that happening, because I know how important it is to stretch the quads. Um, you're going to let that left hip now, like, just as if there's a left um, pocket that has to glue to the floor and you press down there. Now you're lifting from the rib cage, so you stretch the chin up and then that pulls up right through the skin of the abdomen as you come forward. And keep pressing that back toe down as you pull up from your core. This hand, I'll just show you on this side, I'm just putting it on my knee here and you're still reaching forward and pulling up from the skin. And breath. And then you can come back. We're going to bend onto that back knee. Take your time to take the right leg back. Bring your left leg forward. Now tuck your toes under. Lift the torso. Come on up. And then rise right from the rib cage. So tuck the tailbone under. Lift and pull up from the torso. Keep your shoulder blades sliding down. So this woman, Gail Olenikova, she also used to go in um, Olympic rowing. She was uh, scheduled to go in the Olympics. I forget the year that it was canceled, but that was the year she was supposed to be in it. And um, uh, so her whole life altered after that. But she, um, she knew the power of yoga. She was a big yogi. Uh, so imagine she was a bodybuilder, a yoga person, um, rower, uh, marathoner beautiful combination and that's why she had such balanced symmetry, symmetry and strength throughout, throughout her whole torso. It was just her whole body. It was just like her whole body was one unit of strength and endurance. That was always stretching. She was always stretching. So you're pulling up from there. Your shoulders are back. Look up to get that stretch right through the skin. Keep the torso long and then you can come down, point the toes. You've got that left hand here. And now just drop that right hip. So you really drip to that right side. Now um, you're going to be uh, getting um, a video on my website tomorrow and it has a lot of these stretches because I've been working with people on the phone just um, giving them advice for running because a lot of people have started running or walking or running and walking programs. And so this is one of the stretches that I highly recommend. So you're getting IT bands a little bit on this side of course and also in through your hip flexor. And you can do a little bit of a bob if that's okay. If that's merciful. And then you can come all the way back up. You bend into that back knee. Now take your front leg forward. Come on down onto the elbows. Now the knees are apart and your knees are just under your hips. You take an in-breath gaze up and then exhale around your spine. Inhale, gaze up. And exhale round. Inhale, gaze up. And exhale round. Inhale, gaze up. And exhale round. One more time, breathe in, gaze up. And exhale round. Great. And now you can come from here. We're going to come uh, right onto your backs again. Um, I just wanted to do, I'm just thinking out loud here. Actually, just before we do, I did want to teach you the poses that are cobra-like in order to open up in through this area of the body. 
Now, whenever you're doing any kind of cobra, the shoulder blades come down. It's very different from pushing up from the arms. So the shoulders are down, and I want you to just try that right now. Just try pressing the shoulder blades down and pulling the heels of uh, the hands out. And that's, that's pretty much the activation. So you want to have the shoulders down. If you think of kids in the summer when they have their shirts off, and you can see their shoulder blades slide across, you know, they wing out. That's basically what you're going for. So you're pressing shoulders down, and that will open your chest. It's really neat. So you want to come down onto your stomach and press the elbows down into the floor. Now, point your toes and then press the feet down into the floor and then lift the pubic bone and tuck under and then press into the elbows and breathe. And gaze up. Now, you're lifting the chin just a little, but the main thing is press your feet down and pull up strongly from the rib cage. And you stay with your breathing. And again, the elbows are down. Oh, as you rise, as you lift, you know, as you keep the elbows pressing down, you stay with your breath. Stay with your breath. Now, come on down. Now, we're going to do the same movement with the arms out six inches. So you press the palms down. You press into the straight arms and you gaze up and your shoulder blades are pressing down. So again, try not to do this. Push the shoulders forward, but press the elbows back and gaze up. Right away, I don't know if you can feel heat when you practice, but I can feel the heat uh, deep in the torso because there's so much more activation of the ribs when the shoulders come down. It's such a tiny, tiny mechanism to press the shoulders down and the elbows down and you gaze up. And you keep on pressing the tops of the feet down. Now gently release. Okay, we take the hands right beside the chest. Take an in-breath, exhale up, and slowly child's pose back. Release the weight of the forehead. Two more breaths. And then on your next inhale, slowly draw up to seated position. Now, however you can sit for a moment, we're going to take the arms out to the side and then take the hands behind and grab onto the outsides of the elbows. And if that's a piece of cake, then just take your hands onto your back, press the pinkies together, and press the elbows back so you get a wonderful lift from the rib cage. And you keep the ribs in as you gaze up. And then you tuck your chin in and you breathe in and out through the nose. One more breath. And then you can gently release. Okay, good. Now from here, come on into all fours position. Hands are under the shoulders. Take an in-breath and then slide that right arm across, going on to the right shoulder. And then take that left arm up, get into a beautiful twist. Take a deep breath. Take that left hand back as much as you can. Pull up through the core, especially on the exhale. And then you can gently release. Rest, push that left palm down. And then coming over to the other side. Take that left arm across as I get a drink. Just get that reach over strongly with that left shoulder blade. Two 
two more breaths. And then you can gently take that right arm down. Lift from your rib cage, and then just very gently come back into kneeling position. One more time, take the hands behind, take the hands either to the elbows, or if you're able to come into reverse prayer, and then come into your breath. I'm just gonna give you a little reverse prayer incentive. Um, because it is such a strong stretch for the wrist, if you can get the elbows back more, that will allow the hands um, to come together better. Now what happens is you start with the middle fingers and thumbs up. Once the middle fingers can pierce the back, you're on your way. And then if you can turn them so that the thumbs come up, you're on your way even more. So this might be the beginning, is by pressing the fingers up, that will stretch the top of the wrist. So that's kind of the first start. And then eventually, the hands will coax up until you get over your bra strap, and then you just press the hands together and the elbows out, and you're with your breath. Now, the reason we're tucking is we're lengthening the back of the neck. So you want to exaggeratedly tuck and breathe in and out through the nose to open right through the front of the shoulders. Nice deep breaths. Again, nice deep breaths. One more. And then you can release the hands and take a moment before you come into lying position and just notice how you feel. It's actually the time after the pose that you usually have the most effect because your body can assimilate what you've just done. And then you can release. And now you can come right down onto your backs again. So we're going to come this time with the backs of the knees on the bolster. Let your whole body release into the floor and just let your arms rest to the outside. Now take your hands to the ceiling and interlace the fingers. Take an in-breath and just pull the hands up to the ceiling. Just imagine I've come and lasted your wrists for some strange reason and I'm just pulling them right up to the ceiling. Now breathe deep into your upper back. Beautiful, and then exhale over to your left. Draw that right shoulder blade across as you breathe deep. And then you can breathe in, come on back up. Exhale over to the right. Draw that left shoulder blade well across. and then breathe into the center. And now in your own time, just exhale across, breathe in, come on back up, and keep that going. Nice, constant breath. And one more breath. And then you can gently release the arms to the floor. Let your head roll from side to side. And then you can gently draw right back to your middle. Bend your knees. Now bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees splay out and press your shoulder blades under and out. Now, as you breathe, draw the breath down low into the belly and just let the inner thigh stretch as you let go.
And as I leave you in silence, just feel the whole front body open. As you do, as you breathe and let go, notice to have more and more of your body in contact with the floor by doing a long exhale to let the front body go. On your next in breath, take the arms just out to the side. Turn the palms up to the ceiling. Then a little higher. Take the arms up like a V. Take a breath in to open and expand the chest and the rib cage. Now here, um, invite yourself to go into any movement that feels good, having the options of taking the arms overhead, reaching through the fingertips, stretching through the whole torso or out to the side and press the arms back or in the middle. But just find the best range and maybe just kind of play in all the different places. What I am doing is I'm pressing the bent, the bent elbow slightly back and that's opening in through your chest. And if your floor is dirty, it will be nice and clean right in this area. <laughs> Now just keep on feeling how the chest opens and the rib cage lifts as you press the arms back. And then rest the arms. Great. Now you can bend your knees and take the feet wide, as wide as you wish, but a little wider than your hips, not quite to the edge of the bolster. And then take an in-breath and bend both knees to your left. Press that top right knee away and then take the right arm up on a diagonal and stretch out from that right side. Press the right shoulder blade back and under. Stay with your breath. And then you can breathe in, draw all the way back up. Exhale over to the right. Take that left arm up, reach out on the diagonal, press that top left knee down. Lengthening and reaching out through that left hand. Good, and then you can gently breathe in. Now just draw the knees to the ceiling, hug the knees in wide. Let the knees come apart well as much as you wish. And then do a little rock side to side. And then you can gently release the feet to the top of the bolster, let your body go. And before you come into Shavasana, do a scan of your body. Notice what feels different. 
Notice if there's any part of the body that you can feel more vibration, hum, that's more alive, sensitive, or even tired. Tired is also a beautiful effect. It means that some part of the body has lost tension. And then you can lengthen your legs and come on right up over the bolster, letting go. The arms resting to the side, the fingers naturally curling up and the palms rolled up to the ceiling. Stay with your breath. Keep on noticing if there's any part of your body you can soften and let go more. Continue to breathe gently, in and out through the nose. See if you can take a vacation from any thoughts. Come into the stillness of being right in this breath. Now, very gently on your next in-breath, take a deeper breath in. And again, nice deep breath. And 
and then very gently you can bend your knees and bring your feet right to the top of the bolster. Now do um, a flat a flattening of your low back. So you're going to tilt the tailbone out, flatten the low back down. The bum comes off the floor just about two inches and then slowly lower down, keep the tailbone up. Just the low back first and then the tailbone down. Peel again off the floor, press the low back down, rise and lift. And then once again, exhale, slowly lower down. And one more time, press into the low back, peel the tailbone up, the body totally relaxed and uninvolved and then lower down, the tailbone lats to come down. And you can bend your right knee in, pull it to the outside, and then pull your left knee in, and bend the elbows to the outside, do a gentle rock. Stay with your breath. Great. Now you can gently roll over. Come on onto your right side. Take that right hand under for a pillow and just lie on that side for a moment. Let your body settle. Good. Now take that top left leg and just reach it out and hold on to the leg. Reach the heel out and pull through the back of the leg. Excellent. Reach the heel out, pull the toes back, spread the toes. Reaching, stretch out the Achilles. Okay, now you're gonna do a fun thing. You're gonna just roll that leg over, roll to your other side, and then bend that underside knee in, you're gonna switch sides, and then take that top right knee out. So you're on your right, you've got your right hand under, you've got your left, you've got your right leg up under, you're lifting and you reach out through that heel. Get the toes pulling back as you reach. Good. You're, when you exhale, you pull in through your core to get that stretch in here as you get the reach. And then you can bring that left leg in, top right leg rather. And then you're gonna draw right up to seated position. And I'd like you to take a moment to simply sit tall and to feel into all of the effects of the pose. So you really feel yourself to rock right down into the ground. Feel that space in between your ribs and your hips. So you feel that wonderful ascending quality, rising. Breath. Keeping the chin in. Again, stay with your breath. Good. And then you can bring your awareness back to this room. Taking the arms to the outside, turn the fingers in, press the hands behind you, and lift and gaze up. Lift the eyes and press them onto fingertips. You can get that really nice lift. And the hands are quite close as you get the stretch in through the wrist and you gaze up. And then you, this is really challenging. You tuck your chin while your hands maybe need to walk in a bit and to give you more of a press up. And you lift right from your low back. Keeping your breath steady. And then you can gently release. Good, relax the hands, just having them right at the side of the body. And then you're all ready to go into the rest of your day. That was wonderful. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> I feel like one of those kids' programs. <laughs> and um, just if you're bored tomorrow morning, if you have like some time, um, kindly, the Rotary Club has invited people to come to their uh, meeting tomorrow. I'm going to be speaking at um, approximately 8.25 tomorrow morning. And if you'd like to come, 
then um, what the president will do is he'll just send you the link to join the Zoom meeting. So you're quite welcome to come. I'm going to be doing about a 15 minute talk about the ability to be in joy no matter what stressor you're experiencing and how that's possible. And they'll be sent, people will be just sending in their questions and say, okay, how is it possible in this, in this case? So that'll be tomorrow morning at uh, approximately 8.25. It'll be about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so have a great day, you guys. <clears throat> Hi, Celeste, it's Sarah. So did you say you could send us a link?